Shamai, I'm going to try and answer some of your questions today. So a few weeks ago, I made a video asking you guys, my lovely uh, subscribers and viewers, if you had any questions for me. So that's what we're going to do today is try and answer some of those. So let's get stuck in. 50 man traveling. I've actually featured his ukulele collection on Show Us Your Ukes. Do you feel it is worth spending a lot on a ukulele? And I know he has spent, you know, around about 80 pounds has been his limit. Um, it's entirely up to you. You can buy a playable ukulele for 40, 50 pounds. 80 pounds is going to get you something very playable normally a named brand um i have found personally 200 250 pounds upward is going to get you something that you think oh this is nice to play and listen to it might have slightly different features um whether it might be you know a comfort edge or a electro acoustic um 500 pounds is going to get you something very nice to play and listen to um whether you ever need to spend that much money is entirely up to you all right and then if you're looking at sort of spending thousands really you've got to be able to justify that um but no you don't need to have a really expensive ukulele to love playing it so next up from Laurie, one of my long time supporters. Thank you, Laurie. And I featured her ukulele on Shows You Ukes as well. So the question, how long should you be playing the bass before you try fretless? An excellent question. Okay, I would say a while. If you've never um, played a string instrument, like the violin or cello or double bass, um, you really need to get your basic technique sorted first. Know exactly what all the notes are on the fretboard, not be worrying about plucking and be really quite confident. Then when you try fretless, you can really concentrate on the listening aspect to it because that's really, really important playing the fretless bass. All right, it's being able to hear if you're in tune or not because um because of the smaller scale compared to say a bass guitar or double bass um you haven't got a lot of wiggle room so if your finger is in the wrong place you're going to sound very out of tune all right so get your technique sorted left hand and right hand um and then when you move to fretless um you can really concentrate on that intonation and listening to if you're in tune Next question. One I get asked quite a lot actually, and I keep forgetting, um, I never answered it in the first question and answers video I did. It's basically t-shirts, all right? So, uh, where can I get a dragon shirt? Thanks so much, that's from Michael Janowski. I hope I said that right. Again, Michael is another long time supporter and always writes such lovely comments. Um, not just Michael asking though, Mikey Bissell, how do we get a ukuleleans shirt? I'm actually wearing a ukuleleans one now. And Dark Cerrito, Dark Cerrito, even. Um, thanks for the very nice video. Also love your alien shirt and tattoo. Um, is it available anywhere? Right, I've got a Red Bubble merch shop. There's always a link in the description of all the videos, and there's also a link. If you go on to the Ukulele Wales or Ukuleleans YouTube um, home, you know, the channel home for each of them, there's a little link up in the top corner as well, RB. Um, on the Red Bubble uh, shop, there are quite a few designs on there now. Ukuleleans, Ukulele Wales. Um, also, I think I've done one. I'm here for the uke and love and go and have a check anyway. All right, but they're on there. It is t-shirts, hoodies, etc. And of course, you can get a nice mug. Mm. So yes, there are available t-shirts, links in the description below and on the YouTube 
channel home pages. And of course, thank you to everybody who buys any merchandise because all of that money really does help uh, me get this channel looking better and giving you better content. Right, I know I'm rambling a lot. i sorry, I can't help it. Pat, queen of the field mice. Love the name. Hi, Rachel. How about talking about volume pedals? I haven't got any volume pedals at the minute. Sorry, Pat. If I do ever get a volume pedal, I will, of course, talk about it. All right. Nice suggestion. From Ollie Majanda. Um, again, I featured Ollie's collection on Show Us Your Ukes. So we got a little bit about the kitchen. A question about electric ukes. Um, dedicated steel strings. Right, okay. The question is, do you have any insight onto what gauges would be good for a tenor size uke and would it be better to use strings one to four um, or two to five? Right, first bit. Use the first four or the highest four strings from a guitar set, okay? Um, in terms of gauge, Right, let me get this right. I, I've watched a few videos on this, um, but I completely trust Alex from Southern Uke Store, um, and I know he recently talked about this. Uh, gauges of 10 to 46. All right, so I think the uh, A string would be the 10, then you've got the E string would be 13, the C string would be the 17, and then 26 would be your G string because it'd be a low G, but that works. And it's something I do need to do, actually, is change some strings on some of my electric ukes, um, and I'll do some videos on that then because I want to try out some maybe slightly different gauges, but definitely some makes. And all the guitar string makers, um, Ernie Ball, Daddario, Fender, Rotor Sound, they all make guitar strings of those gauges that will fit your electric ukuleles. Robin Iceman, I am trying to learn the island strum. Is there a way to see a song with the song broken down to show when to strum? I'm not sure how to word my question, but wouldn't there be times that the verse stops and you haven't finished the strum pattern. Right, yet yeah, the question does make sense. Thank you, Robin. Uh, first of all, generally on chord charts, you don't tend to have the actual strumming patterns written out if you're reading you know, a song sheet playing um, in a ukulele club, for example. Um, if you go and have a look at my play along videos on the Ukuleleans channel, on some of the videos, much more of the more recent ones, I actually put the strum pattern above each chord change, all right? And chord change is the important bit there because you mention about the verse stopping, all right? Generally, the strum pattern is going to be much, much smaller. So each beat or each measure or bar might have a particular strum pattern. In your case, the island strum, down, down, up up, down, up. So it might be that you play it, let's just say, down, down, up, up, down, up, eight times within a verse, okay? But you will never have a strum pattern, or you shouldn't have a strum pattern that goes on to a different section. The strum patterns generally are either so many per bar or measure, or so many per chord before you change. All right, but if you go and check out the play along videos on the ukuleleans, you'll actually see some of those moving as the song plays. I do hope that has helped because that's not the easiest thing to explain. Whizzing through from Perry Lewis. Rachel, I have a buzz on my baritone, which I'm sure is coming from the bridge. What is the safest way to deal with this? Um, oh, I hate buzzing ukuleles or any instruments, to be perfectly honest. Um, sometimes it can be as simple as making sure everything is tight on the ukulele. So you've tightened up any screws to do with the tuning. Um, maybe, and this has caught me a couple of times, 
If you've got a strap button installed, occasionally the screw from that can cause a little bit of a noise. Um, it can be underneath the bridge, inside the uke. Maybe you've got um, the string is quite long and that's touching. Um, or if it's an electroacoustic ukulele, some of the wiring can cause a buzz as well and even though sometimes you think no it's definitely coming from the bridge or the saddle area or oh, the saddle could be loose but you think no it's definitely coming from that area it can turn out to be a bit of fret buzz all right so it could be the action so make sure everything is tightened up um, <clears throat> make sure there isn't anything inside that might be causing it or the frets the action are high enough very occasionally um, it can be a crack in the wood um, and sometimes I hate to say this I, I've got a ukulele upstairs that I've had for a few years it's got a buzz on it I can't solve it my local mate who runs the shop can't solve it um, it's just one of those things and I've tried loads and loads of things on oh, one other thing it could be is the actual string itself or the set of strings it's sometimes worth trying other strings to see if that gets rid of it. <clears throat> Good luck, because I know it can be the most annoying thing sometimes. Great question, though. From Dave Phelps. I'd be interested in learning more about your video making process. What's your workflow? What software do you use? What hardware, etc. Right. <clears throat> this is going to take a minute. Okay, first of all, some videos I just go boom and I don't even think about how it's done. I don't plan it. There are, uh, uh, it just happens. And they tend to either be sort of ramble ones or um, like when I did uh, a maintenance one recently because I couldn't really plan it because I wasn't sure how it's going to work. Anyway, generally though, I'll have the idea of what I want to do in the video. It could be a follow-on from other videos um, that I've made similar, like the reading music for bass ukulele. Um, it could be something I've really wanted to do and I've had to sit down and think, right, is it possible? Once I've got the idea, um, then I often sit down and make a plan. Now, <laughs> I don't write scripts. All right, I'm sure most of you who've watched more than one of my video realize, my God, she can talk for Wales. Just to give you an idea, okay, so this video that I'm making today actually took a fair bit of planning. I had to um, gather together all the actual questions to make little graphics that you've seen popping up on the screen. Um, then I had to plan the order that I was going to ask them in. <clears throat> then I was had to... Um, think about is there anything I need during the actual video yeah I'll be putting things on to the video in the editing but is there anything physical that I need for the video all right I will write notes I don't write whole scripts okay just to give you an idea there we are it's literally a few lines of various questions where I've actually had to remember some detail in the question all right. If I'm doing a lesson, depending on the lesson, how much I actually plan it. Um, again, the bass reading music lessons, I've done those so many times over the years that as long as I've got the book, boom, 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 I know exactly what I'm doing. If I'm doing something different, I do tend to write a plan or notes in more detail for myself. So I don't forget things. I always forget things, right? All right, <laughs> hence why I write it all down. Uh, so I have the idea, I've planned it. I've got all the equipment and everything ready. I start to film, all right? Sometimes like this, it can be just one camera shot. Sometimes I'm getting snazzy now. I'm using two or even three camera shots in a video I might have an overhead video I might have one to the side and a straight on camera I've got combinations of I use a Panasonic 
camcorder. I've got a Canon mirrorless camera. I've got a little handheld vlogging type thing. Um, and I've also got a little action camera. In fact, if you want to see more about some of the equipment I use to film, go and check out my Studio Tour 2021. There is a new one going to be coming a little bit later this year, but I do explain and show some of the actual equipment as well. All right, so that's cameras. There's lighting involved. There's microphones. For example, this video, there's an overhead microphone up there. Whereas if I'm doing something using amps, I'll have a microphone in front of the amp itself. I might have a couple of different microphones around the place. Um, that all goes into a little multi-track recorder that I've got. Again, you can see it in the studio video. It's made by Tascam. That records however many audio tracks I'm doing at the same time onto a little SD card. So I've got my various videos. All right, so it could be one, two, even three SD cards and that. An SD card for my audio, I then go and use the computer. And in fact, I use a PC, all right? I use a Mac upstairs, but for my actual film editing, it's all done on a PC using a program called Filmora. Now I started off using Filmora when I started making the play along videos five years ago, something like that. And Filmora has progressed and got better and I've got better at using it as well but it's it's a slightly cheaper version of things uh like final cut pro all right um it's great for beginners but you can also do quite a lot of snazzy things on it um and i've got to admit i absolutely love using filmora and i use it as i said on a pc so i would put in my different footage bits of videos I'd put in my audio I'd sync all those up <clears throat> and then I normally spend many hours you'd be surprised actually um editing it down now just to give you an idea of lengths sorry I'm rambling I know um if I'm filming I don't know a video that ends up about 10 minutes long I've normally filmed at least 30 minutes of footage it could even be a lot more than that all right so um footage goes down into the size of the video which can take anything between i don't know three or four hours up to quite a lot longer depending what i am doing the video gets exported i've got to check it a few times first um you never want to upload a video or even do a huge export that'll take an hour and a half to find you've made a mistake. Um, once I'm happy with that video, I store it in a couple of places just in case, but it's always ex it's stored externally. I don't just upload it. And then once I've got it all stored safely, I upload it to YouTube, put in the description and bang that button to make it public. All right, sorry that has taken a while to explain, but it is an excellent question and it's not something I think I've really talked about the full process before. So idea, plan, film, get the actual audio and film and all the other bits of gubbins and B-roll and everything, put that together during the editing process, the big export and then the upload. Hope that answers the question. Phew. Okay, another little swig of tea for a minute. Again, there we go. There's my ukuleleans mug. Right, next question. Ah, from Jules. Jules is one of my biggest fans, I'm going to say, supporters. Absolutely brilliant. I've had a lot of communication back and forth with Jules over the years now. All right, so... Here's my burning question. I love all of Jules's comments. You know how you talk to the camera as if you're speaking with a non-electronic human. 
in the most natural way possible. That wasn't natural then, that was sounding quite robotic. Let me try that again. You know how you talk to the camera as if you're speaking with a non-electronic human in the most natural uh, way possible. Like I'm sitting in the room across from you and we're having a little conversation and a play. Is that hard to do? And how long did it take you to do that without having to erase it all and start over again? So this sort of links in to the last of the previous question about the workflow. Right, I think a few things help. All right, let me start. Rewind back a few years and it's worth checking out. I'll show you a little bit here now. Um, I started making ukulele and play along videos and nobody ever saw who I was. In fact, I absolutely loved the fact I was completely anonymous, all right? Um, I think some people thought it was a team of people. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I quite enjoyed the fact that nobody knew who I was or what I looked like or how old I was or anything else. Um, and then I made the first video that you see me in is um, 20,000 subscribers, all right? Welcome to Ukuleleans. Just wanted to say a little hello and thank you for all your support. We've been going for almost two years. We've just hit 20,000 subscribers and over three and a half million views. And I was quite chuffed with that. I thought, wow, I've gone on camera. Um, and you know, it's not very long and it sort of thanks everybody for subscribing um, and you know, talks about t-shirts and I thought, yes, great, bit robotic, but I was happy. Went downstairs, uploaded it, told my husband who promptly went, why do you hold the camera the wrong way? <gasps> that just goes to show how completely naive I was when it came to making videos. All right, so I, I like to think I've come quite a long way since then. So let's just go back for a minute. Um, I talk, I talk all day long, okay? My job as a teacher really does help. Um, but this is gonna sound quite weird. I'm, I'm sat here now um, looking at the camera and I am genuinely imagining lots of you guys sitting and watching me back, all right? It might be I'm trying to um, be helpful and do a lesson. It could be that I'm trying to be entertaining and be funny or, you know, just trying to sort of put a smile on people's faces. Um, the more I do it, the happier I am in front of a camera and the more natural, I suppose, even if you go back and look at some of my first videos here in Ukulele Wales, I used to write out a lot more what I was going to say and I'd be very stop start. I would take, um, and this answers the next bit then, sort of how long does it take? I used to uh, record a bit, think, oh right, check it, go back, um, <clears throat> record the next bit, check it, right, yeah, go back and then edit it. And so I'd have all of these loads and loads and loads of little videos to put together. Um, now I tend to press record and just keep going. And then I do an awful lot more in the edit. So it could be if I make a silly little mistake, I stop it um, and either start again from that section or sometimes just try and start from a word and cut it in. All right, sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, <clears throat> doing something like this now, I know I'm wittering on and I know people are gonna be sitting there going, answer the question, I can't help it. One of my husband's favorite sayings is, skip to the end, because he knows I just like to talk. So I, hopefully, I, you know, it's a brilliant question, thank you, Jules, because it's not something I've ever learned how to do. Um, but being a teacher has helped and the more I do it now and the more I'm getting to know you guys, the viewers and the subscribers and my supporters, the more I can imagine some of you sitting there watching it and I, you know, as always, try and entertain and try and be helpful. I do hope that has answered the question but I also know Jules will come straight back and make another brilliant little comment or make a, a ask another brilliant little question.
And I should actually, one day I will do it. I've got so many bloopers from videos over the years. If there's something funny that has happened in it or something has gone horribly wrong, and it does happen, um, I will try and put those together. Right, so that was a couple of long ones then. Anthony Davis is a U bass, is essentially the same as a three quarter size bass. Same tuning, so I assume so. Right, I'm not 100% sure if you're talking about a three quarter size bass guitar or a three quarter size double bass. I'm going to assume you're talking about a bass guitar. Uh, no, all right. Um, check out a couple of my videos, but I do show you that even with a smaller or short scale bass guitar, there is a big difference with them. Okay, generally speaking, three quarter size or a, you know, a short scale bass guitar is between about 28 inches, 31, 32 inches, whereas a U bass or a bass ukulele is normally between 20 inches and about 23. I'm thinking my fanner is probably pushing being a proper bass ukulele, but that's 23 inches. Um, and I also know, I'm just trying to think, um, there are a few other slightly bigger scale ones. Microtone springs to mind as well. And of course, things like the old Ashbury um, bass. I can't really, I wouldn't call that a bass ukulele anyway. But no, three quarter size basses are much bigger than bass ukuleles. Right, from Denise. New kitchen is great, thank you very much. Um, I really like the baritone sound, so I had the dealer put on baritone strings on a tenor uke because of my small hands. It's working out good, but I want to put unwound strings on the D and G spots. The dealer said it will not sound right. I may bring it to a guitar store, have them do it. Um, and she goes on to say about the ukulele being very popular. Okie dokie, right. So I get the swapping the scales if you've got smaller hands. I'm not a baritone player, all right? We've got a couple of baritone ukes in school. Um, and yeah, I know the chord shapes, but I'm not a baritone player. So I'm not an expert on this. I do know you can get unwound um, baritone strings worth I think make them probably other makes as well what I would do is go to a music shop or a guitar shop spe especially if it's somebody you know and trust and ask their opinion on it all right I also get not everybody likes wound strings um, so yes you can get unwound ukulele strings for baritone um, by worth but take it to a shop and ask their opinion because I would hate to give you wrong advice. Oh, from Theo M. One question, why do you have the pedals on a table and not on the floor? I can answer this very simply. It's to do with filming. All right, if I've got the pedals up on the unit next to me, I've got tidy light, I can get an overhead camera shot and they're there. It's much, much easier for me to reach them for filming. If I was just playing using a pedal board, they'd be on the floor as normal. Odontomatics, I hope I've said that right. Okay, uh, I lead a ukulele club, so I've been giving some thought to how songs should be counted in. It's not as simple as one would think because some songs have pickup measures, incomplete, uh, measures at the start or beats um, before the first chord and of course there are different time signatures and rhythms other than the typical 4-4 four, four common time um, and then they go on to put their comment of how they go one two three go I'm just explaining that right yes completely agree with you on that all right some people as you say um, don't know how to do a pickup um, or an incomplete bar or measure. I would count it like you. The only difference is say something is in four beats and the last beat of the bar uh, you start on, I would go one, two, three, four. 
And on the four, see, I'm actually, I automatically start conducting. I spent many years conducting orchestras and things. Um, but let, as a conductor, one, two, three, four. Four is the start. The only difference is you go one, two, three, go. All right. It's just the way I've always been taught it. And that's the way I've carried on teaching it that we start, say it's in three, a one, two, three. But that three is the upbeat. If you're playing an orchestra, you don't even get the one, two, three. Sometimes a conductor literally go, start. So they, they are, they're beating up the four. So if you imagine, if you're leading your ukulele group, you're actually conducting, all right? You can almost play, you can not play, you can almost raise your hands to show where they start. Hope that helps. Okay, Robert Judy. Again, long time supporters. Great comments from you guys. Thank you very much. Another big thanks for your U-based content question. How can I keep my second finger from flying above the fretboard? Maybe some base exercises for fretting hand that you can share. Hang on. Quick base ukulele. I'm not doing a whole lesson now. And I know, I think it was Tobias. Um, I think so anyway. Answered this on the actual video. But I've also covered this in school really recently. One, one of the um, base pupils, I noticed the other day in lesson where they were doing this and waving their fingers about when they were putting um, other fingers down. So how can I keep my second finger from flying above the fretboard doing that? Okay, is pluck the right string. All right, try if you can. All right, when you put your little finger down, you put all three down together. Okay, if it helps, break it up. So you could do open one, two, four, but the two four is gonna be really quick. All right, so you put in your middle finger down before your last little finger and your ring finger before you actually pluck the string. I'll do it slowly. Okay, oh, we had a little ting then. All right, so my middle finger can go down slightly before my ring finger and little finger. But yes, I will try and get some exercises done. If you know what scales are, they are the best way of practicing your left hand technique if you've got flying fingers. Right, so I've swapped out the bass ukulele for this next question. When playing low G, do the chords change or stay the same? Quick answer, they stay the same, all right? Here's a low G. No idea if it's in tune. Just about, okay? So if I want to play a C chord on a low G, it would just be our ring finger, third fret on the A string, okay? Here is a high G. Here's my C. All right, so the shape is exactly the same um, whether you're finger picking or strumming. C, F, G7, C. Low G, C, F, G7, C. Chord shape's exactly the same, and having a high and low G means you get a really nice balance of tone as well. We are almost there. So, from CCAA, does something like the U bass exist that is full size bass? Basically, an acoustic bass with these special kinds of strings. Um, again, I'm not 100% sure. Are you talking about a bass guitar? An acoustic bass or like behind me a double bass okay right I don't know if you ever heard of Ashbury um, weird looking instrument google it it is worth it I promise 
it was probably one of the first instruments that appeared with silicone strings all right the most similar to the polyurethane or rubber type strings we see on bass ukuleles and u basses today um i've never heard of a double bass using rubber strings apart from sort of you know homemade bases with elastic bands and things like that microtone make a micro bass which is slightly bigger again they do a 23 inch scale and a 25 inch scale so that's not as big as a full size acoustic bass guitar um but that's probably the biggest one i know of i could well be wrong maybe i've missed it all right but not that i'm aware of but if i do ever come across something i'll try and let you know Aguila make double bass strings that's just flown into my mind now i don't know if they do anything for the double bass um, but might be worth checking out their website as well right <clears throat> the very last question it's another one from laurie okay um always busy with something rachel yes unfortunately i am normally it's too much to do with work and not ukulele all right so what is your dog's name this is referring to one of my most recent videos where um i convert a guitar rack into a ukulele rack um and my dog uh, the breed is a case hond okay um features in it quite a lot i didn't even notice till i went to go and edit it anyway the dog's name is stan okay we've had four case hons over the years um going back almost 25 years ago was our first called kenny then we had kyle then we had millie and currently we've got stan if you haven't worked out the connection it is south park all right but as i said i didn't really he has been in a couple of other videos as well i think when i've been out the garden um but i had no idea how much he was in this video until i went to go and edit it so stan is the name of the dog thank you for all the wonderful questions not just on that questions video uh, that i made asking you for your questions um but a few of these have come from other videos as well um and i'm always getting wonderful questions and so many awesome comments as well so please 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 keep the questions and the comments coming um I do try and answer them as quickly as I can. Um, it is getting more difficult, all right? The more questions and comments come in, I try and keep up with them. So I will certainly think about doing some more of these kind of videos as well. I do hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sorry I talk too much. It's as simple as that. But there we go. That's some of your questions answered. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed if you have a comment or a question though feel free leave it below give us a like if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos thank you for watching